Uh, in this video, I'm going to be doing a clutch on a 140 Di Polo, but it will uh, apply to quite a lot of other models that are front wheel drive. Um, so I'm going to start by taking the air box out, the battery, the battery tray, uh, basically making room to get to the gearbox. Um, then we'll be taking clutch off, drive shafts, and then drop the gearbox out. Right, just a quick catch up now as to what I've done so far. So, obviously, you saw that I took the air box out, the battery, and the battery tray. And then down here, I've taken the gear selector lever off there and the one that goes through there. And then I've unbolted the gear linkage out of there, there, and then there's another bolt under this pipe. Just there. Let's see the hole. Just there, and then I had to unbolt this pipe, which won't apply to a lot of the other models, but for this one it does, because it's a blue motion, so the turbo sat with the intake on this side and the boost pipe on this side, whereas the other ones it goes out the other side, so that won't be an issue. And then once I've done that, I un I unbolted the clutch, which is there. That's the slave cylinder. Just unbolted it out of there, which is two 13s. A lot of this is 13s, so that's 13. Gear linkage was all 13s. The clutch slave cylinder were 13s. The battery tray were 13s. This boost pipe had a 13 on it. And then, obviously, the battery connections are 10 mils. Uh, the only other thing I've got to look, I've got left to do up here now is remove these 18mm gearbox bolts at the top. I don't know if you can see them. The torch is a bit blinding. But there's there's one about here somewhere. There's another one about here. There's two you can see going through the starter motor. There's one there with a 13mm on it for that connection. And then there's one on the bottom side as well. There's two 16s underneath. There's um, an 18 at the back down there, and then sometimes, if it hasn't already had some work done, there's a little dust shield at the back that's a 10mm, and if you don't take that off, the gearbox won't be coming out. Uh, I've also got to undo the drive shafts and the two mounts, this mount here and one underneath the car. So I'm going to undo the top bolts, leave this mount on, then I'll go underneath, do the drive shafts, the bottom bolts, and then I'll probably come back up top, undo this mount, and drop the box out. Right, I think we're about done here. I've just taken out these two short 18 mils from the top of the box, and this long 18 mil from the starter motor. Right, now we're underneath, looking from the driver's side across, or the right-hand side, because not all of you will be driving right-hand drives. And first we need to be taking these two 16mm out 
for the gearbox mount. I might take this one out as well and then remove the gearbox mount completely so it gives us a bit more room to work with. And then the other bolts I'll be taking out are there's an 18 mil just up here and then there's a dust shield just above it. But I'm gonna have to take the drive shaft bolts out first. And then the drive shafts do actually compress enough to let you get the gearbox out. Both of them will compress, but if you wanted, you could just undo the bottom ball joint and move the wheel out of the way. You don't actually have to remove the drive shafts like a lot of people do. So then, once I've got those out, I'll be taking out the other bolts. That are, there's a 16mm up here, and then there should be one there, but that one's missing for some reason. Someone's left it out previously. There's an 18mm up here, and then there's the one underneath the starter motor as well. Right, so I got it wrong. There's a 16 there and there's a 16 right up the front up here. And then I think this one's been left out because this gearbox will be used on other models as well that have a bolt hole down here, but this one doesn't have a bolt hole. So I've taken that one out, taken that one out. Still got to get the 18 out of there and the 18 out of the bottom of the start motor. I'm going to leave that for now because it's actually separating the gearbox and the engine. I'm going to take the drive shafts off now and then hopefully I'll be able to get to that little dust shield and then I'll undo that last bolt. Yeah, I've finished off underneath now. I've uh, undone both drive shafts, took out the 18mm and the little dust shield. This is the dust shield here. So you've got to take it out otherwise it gets caught. All's left now is these two 16 mils, one there, one at the other side. And then once I undo that, it'll drop down. So I'm gonna put a jack under it just to lower it down slowly and then drag it out. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna film it because you can't really see much anyway. So I'm just gonna undo these two bolts, lower the gearbox down, pull it out, and then we'll be changing the clutch. Alright, finally got the gearbox out with a minor casualty of that water fitting, that water housing up there. Luckily I've got a spare one of those. Right, so to take the pressure plate off, there's, I think there's six 9mm bolts. Alright, so I can see there's wear on the on the pressure plate where the bearing sits and then the actual friction plate. Still got a bit of life in it, but 
don't know if you can hear that. It rattles quite badly. I mentioned it in the DPF video that you could hear it, but it's the centre spline that actually moves. I don't know if you can see it properly, but that shouldn't move. So this is the new friction plate. Now, if you see the spline in the middle, it is different to the other one, so I'm wondering if the other one had the wrong clutch in. And if it's not the wrong clutch that it had in before, then this is the wrong clutch, and I'll have to take it back to the parts shop. Right, so I've got the two plates fastened together with the clutch tool. I'm just going to put it in place now. I'm going to give it a little tap with the leather hammer. That's in place now, so I'm going to put the bolts in. We'll top these down first and then take the clutch tool out. Right, now these clutch bolts have a quite a low torque setting of uh, 20 newton meters, I believe. So we'll start at the bottom and we'll go diagonal. That's all those top down. Now I'm going to remove the clutch tool. Right, so now that's in place, I'm just going to replace that coolant fitting that externally broke earlier when I slipped with the pry bar. And then I'll be putting the gearbox back in. I just want to get this repaired so it's not so it's not doing that. Right, so now I've finished doing the coolant housing repair. I was going to put the new clutch release bearing or throw out bearing onto the clutch fork and now it's got two little tabs so that's how you take it off you've got to squeeze those little tabs from the back side but to put it back in I'm just going to click it in and that's it that's that's mounted now right so you can see the little tabs are holding on there and then that little ball socket there with the metal clip around it just clips onto that little ball down there put a torch on there so you can see the little ball and then this slips over the input shaft and then you've got to clip the bottom on there that's the new bearing in place on the old clutch fork I've just pushed it all the way back because we need the input shaft to be clear so it'll go into the clutch so now we've got to put the gearbox back in the car and then we'll put everything else back together. Right, I've got most of it done now. I've got the box back in, put everything back together. Uh, I've just got the gear linkage to do and the drive shafts. And then we can test it out. Right, I've just topped up the coolant after I broke that water housing. And now I'm just going to fire it up to make sure the rattle is actually gone. So hopefully this video helps somebody and if you need to know how to do anything else drop us a comment and I'll see what I can come up with. Thanks for watching.